Hello, folks. Thank you for joining me today. Okay, so I'm finally getting ready to finish this portion of my garage. This is the last we left it. It's been sitting like this for months, and now it's time for me to stop sitting on my hands and actually get it finished. If you want to see the first part uh, before watching this, uh, it should be somewhere on the screen, top corner, whatever link to that. Thank you to everybody who has subscribed and is watching these videos. To be honest, I don't know why you keep doing it. Uh, most of the time I feel pretty self-conscious and stupid making these, so thank you to everyone. So I guess we should just get right into it. Like, subscribe, bell. All right, let's go. All right, I just gotta let this coat dry and I'm gonna do at least one more coat, possibly three in some spots at least. If you're doing this like in your house, you're definitely gonna be doing at least three coats and sanding in between. Uh, I'm not really going for indoor wall quality, so I'm just gonna kind of play it by ear. But right now I gotta let this dry and then I'll come back, sand a little bit and then go for a second coat. So it's been a few days, the drywall's almost done. Uh, I still have to sand it. I did end up doing three coats. Uh, I don't know, just because I wanted to, mostly for this. Uh, the screw heads don't need three coats, but mostly for this, just to get the mud spread out so this can hopefully be good and smooth. So yeah, I still have to sand that, and then I was gonna do a, an orange peel texture. I think you can get cans of it, and I think uh, according to one can with a fine orange peel finish, you can get, like, I can get this whole thing easily with one can, if not even more, for like 10 or 11 bucks for a can. So I'm gonna do that, uh, but first thing, I'm going to, I wanna do at least one coat of polyurethane on the wood. I don't necessarily need to, it's just, a, it's a garage, but I think it'll help just give it some protection for, you know, the fact that it's a garage. I'm just gonna be using uh, Minwax Polycrylic. It's just a water-based clear coat, uh, polyurethane. Uh, this is satin, I just had this on hand, so uh, that's what I'm gonna use. So, yeah, I think I can go ahead and get started on that. Okay, I have one coat on uh, of the polyurethane. How much will one coat protect it? I don't really know, but hopefully at least a little bit. I feel better. I guess that's all that matters. All right, so I really felt like changing my shirt. No, it's clearly uh, another day. Uh, that's kind of how I do things. I do like one thing a day, so. Whatever, moving on. What I wanna do next uh, could be seen by some as a waste of time. I could kind of see it as a waste of time myself, but I wanna do it. Uh, I didn't wanna just have a blank bare wood wall, so I wanted to do something to, uh, I guess, spice it up a little bit. So hopefully I like it, because if I do it and then don't, I'm not undoing it, so. So let's hope I'm cool with it. And hopefully you guys like it too, I guess. Hello, I'm the one that's gotta live with it, so. Stand by. Okay, so that's interesting, right? I mean, it adds something, I think. Hopefully I continue liking it. On to the next part, which actually excites me. I have these ugh, hang tracks for, uh, well, hold on. For these shelving tracks here, now I obviously can't uh, show you this with one hand, but those wall tracks will hang off of this lip right here. So this is I gotta put all the way up at the top. That will hang off of that. I'll screw that into my joist. And then I got some shelf brackets to go into those tracks there. 
And that is going to be what holds a ton of my, uh, well, it's a lot of trim stuff that I didn't use when I built my house. But it's been in the way for years and I haven't been able to use a whole lot of the back side of my garage. And now I'm finally gonna get that stuff up and out of my way so I can hopefully really start cleaning this place up. So this is gonna be my first hang track right here. It's, I'm gonna have a vertical uh, standard right here as well as right here. So this is, I'm just taking all the way up to the top. I'm gonna screw that in. Let me just get one in. I don't have to hold it anymore. These are the shelf brackets I'm using. They got uh, this little kickstand. A lot like the ones I did in my basement, or these are these are the same brand and everything as the ones that I used in my basement uh, on my storage room organization job. But these are their heavyweight variety, which can, according to them, hold up to 500 pounds each with these brackets when used with the whole thing. So it's like the heavyweight hang track, heavyweight standard, heavyweight bracket. These can supposedly hold up to 500 pounds a piece. I hope they're correct. Okay, now I can hang it. Um, I just wanted to have these here, just above my window here. I don't know if that's exactly where. You see, once the weight's on there, it'll that'll push that down into there. Kickstand help give it help support it there. Uh, I got a few more of these to do, and then um, I can probably start putting crap up here. So now that I have all these brackets done, the next thing I want to do is actually get them loaded with the stuff that I'm gonna be storing up there. I know it may seem a little weird because that seems like that should be something done at the end of the job once everything's finished, as obviously I still have this uh, down here to complete. But in my case, this is actually going to help me finish this stuff because I have a whole lot of crap back in this corner that is kind of in my way for finishing the bottom portion of this wall down here. So if I can get that stuff up out of my way, it'll make that a whole lot easier. Because there was no way I was gonna just clear everything out of my way and bust this job out real quick. Because if you've watched any of my stuff before, including this job, you should be well aware that I much rather prefer jobs take months at a time as opposed to weeks or days. That's just silly. <laughs> Okay, so I'm pressing pause on this. Just because uh, putting all the stuff up there, it's I'm realizing just how heavy a lot of this stuff is. Now, really and truly, I think these can take the weight as is, but I would just rather be safe than sorry. So each one of these brackets can hold 500 pounds a piece, it says. So I have five brackets. Theoretically, I should be able to hold 2,500 pounds. Now, do I think all of this trim together is over a ton? Probably not, it's, it's hard for me to believe that it is, although it's still pretty doggone heavy as I'm putting it all up there. So I'm kind of thinking I wanna try and get at least a couple more of the vertical standards with the brackets. Now it'll be interesting having to install those now with everything up there, I'm gonna to have to install the standard with the bracket already attached and maybe have to lift up on this end to get it up in there and on the hang track. I think I'll be able to get it fine, at least on these two ends. Uh, which so that might all be all that I do is just two more one vertical with the bracket here One vertical with the bracket on the very end there And I think that will just give me a little more peace of mind that this won't come Tumbling down at some point because if that were to ever happen and somebody was under here They'd probably be dead because this stuff weighs quite a lot So I just want to be safe and I want to add a little bit more but I gotta wait for my wife to get home so I can go to the store because I got kids inside. So I'm gonna move on to something else right over here. What I got is this Rubbermaid fast track uh, rail here with this bike, oh, I'm sliding it, with this bike hook here. I got three bike hooks. And what I wanna do is hang this here and I, because I wanted a space for our kids' bikes, especially in the winter time, rather than them just being in the garage, on the floor, taking up space. I thought it'd be better if we could hang them, so I'll be hanging them vertically right here along this wall here. I thought that would just be much better, especially in the winter time, when they they could be up and out of the way, and just to hopefully keep it more organized. I think I want to get the bracket right up on that 
horizontal seam right there. I think that'll get it up uh, high enough on the wall to where even when these are hanging, they can be more out of the way, not in our way, trying to walk around them and still allow space underneath them for any sort of storage that I wanna do there. This looks pretty good. Obviously, I have to take these back down to finish my wall here, but uh, yeah, I like that. So I was able to get these extra brackets and vertical pieces in place. Obviously, after the fact, what I had to do was put the brackets on the vertical standards before actually putting them up there because I couldn't get the brackets on after the fact if I wanted to just hang the vertical pieces. And then I was able to push them back behind the, the stuff that was already on the other brackets and shove them up to get that hook uh, under that lip of the hang track and I was able to get them in there and then screw them in place. Okay, so I just gave all this drywall one last sanding. It's not perfect, but again, I wasn't trying to make it perfect. Most of the stuff is gonna get covered with either shelving or toolboxes, and it's a garage, so it's probably just gonna end up getting beat up anyway. So I don't wanna to work too hard to try and make this perfect. I bought this orange peel wall texture. I've never used this before, so this is gonna be a uh, fun learning experience for me. I'm gonna go for the fine texture, the fine setting, I guess, on this, uh, because I think that looks better, and also it gives you more square footage per can, so you just get more out of it. All right, I guess I'm going to give this stuff a try. Hope I don't screw it up. I'm probably gonna start in the back corner here. So uh, in case I do not do it all that well to begin with, it'll be back there where hopefully no one's ever really gonna see. Okay, so either these square footage numbers are bull crap or I put way too much on. I don't know, it doesn't seem like I did. Maybe I did though, because this says on fine, which is what I had it set on, I should get 110 square feet out of this can. And I don't think from here to that corner uh, is 110 square feet. So yeah, I don't know what that's about. Bull crap. And I only got one of these, so now I have to go back to the store. Awesome. Okay, so remember when I said, uh, hopefully I don't screw it up? Apparently I did. On this adjustment of heavy to fine, apparently I went the wrong way. I did this and basically just unscrewed this nozzle when I should have been going this way. So what it turns out I did is actually the heavy texture over here, which is not what I wanted to do, which does get like half of the square footage that the fine texture does. So this may be much more in line with what the can actually says than what I thought. So yeah, I screwed it up. So I do need to get another can still, and I wanted to do the fine texture, but to do that now would mean half of the wall is the rough texture, the heavy orange peel, and then half will be fine orange peel. And I'm just wondering how noticeable that'll be. So I plan on having my rack shelving right here and something in the back corner there, my toolbox here. So you may honestly never see it, that there's a difference because this area over here is likely gonna be the only area that's exposed on a regular basis. This stuff back here, one, it's kind of in the back corner of my garage, so that helps. But also there'll be stuff in front of it, I'm pretty sure like all the time. So hopefully, stupid. Hopefully I can do the fine texture here, which I think looks better, and no one will ever really know that I have two heavy and lights on the same wall here. Uh, yeah, I said it was my first time, so you live and learn. Okay, just got back from the store. Got, oops. I got another can. Unfortunately, they didn't have any of the water uh, base. They just have this oil base, so I hope that's okay. It doesn't indicate that there should be any problem with it. I think it just actually dries faster, which seems kind of weird, but it says it dries faster five minutes compared to, yeah, 30 minutes. Hopefully that's fine. By the way, I got this one set correctly this time. Actually, what I think I'm gonna do is just go for the medium texture so it's not quite fine, so maybe it's not as stark of a difference. 
and maybe I just won't tell my wife about this one. Let's give it another go, hopefully correctly this time. Okay, so this stuff is ticking me off. I even did the finer texture, and which should give me 75 to 100 square feet. And I feel like I'm going pretty fast. Like I'm worried I'm not even fully covering, yet I still did not get all the way to my corner. I got into here fairly well. I still feel like I could use more here, but this is completely uncovered or untextured. So this is kind of really annoying because the square footage that I'm seeing on this can is not what I'm getting out of it. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, if I am doing anything wrong, but I feel like to get that, the square footage that it's saying, I would have to barely be even hitting the drywall with texture. There'd barely be anything on it. So, uh, I don't know. It's, this is kind of annoying me. Remember when I said at the beginning of this, I hope I don't screw this up. Okay, so this is it. This is the last can of this stuff I'm gonna buy. Now, before anybody wants to comment and tell me how stupid I am for using this stuff in the first place, I know. This stuff is not meant for this kind of situation. I knew that going in. However, I've never used it before, and given the stated square footage uh, coverage on the can, I thought I would be okay. I thought I'd be able to get it no problem. Obviously, what this is actually meant for is retexturing areas of drywall that you had to fix or cover back up, whatever. Not meant for covering an entire section of wall. I know all this, but I thought I would've been okay. I was wrong. What I probably should've done is something I've done before, rather than just even getting texture, is just taking my drywall mud, thin it out enough to where I could roll it on and just roll that on as texture. So it just gets whatever texture the roller gives it on the wall. I've done that before, it's fine. It would've cost me nothing to do that. That's probably what I should have done. But I'm here now, I'm gonna finish this with this last can, and however it ends up, that's how it's gonna be. So, here we go. Okay, I'm actually pretty happy with that, uh, finally, thankfully. So I'm gonna go work out and let this dry. Okay, actually, I changed my mind, and my shirt. Since this stuff supposedly dries really fast, I'm gonna go ahead and prime this now. I've already mixed this, or, uh, yeah, stirred it all up. So it's been a few minutes actually. I'm gonna go ahead and prime this and then I'll go work out and let the primer dry. So why don't you guys just sit there and watch me paint? <laughs> That'd be so boring. Never mind. And it's done. All right, now I can go work out. Okay, so now it's time to actually paint. This is dry, uh, but don't worry, I'm not gonna make you watch that either. All right. So as you can see, I went with a cool emo black here. I don't think that's the official name of the color. It's the same black as uh, up top right here. I guess I'm just going for a dark and brooding kind of vibe. So obviously I gotta wait for this to dry to do a second coat. Four hour recoat time. Okay, we'll see. In the meantime, I got one, I think, last thing to do. Last thing I gotta do, I'm gonna take, get down. I'm going to, oh, not that side. I'm gonna sand these boards down. Then I'm gonna cover them with a coat of polyurethane. At least one coat, maybe more. This is going to be basically like a chair rail, essentially, for this wall. I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna cover up this uh, joint here. And I think, in terms of actual, like, wall structure stuff, I think that's gonna be it. Yeah, I think so. These trim pieces are dry, and this is the last thing I have to do on this wall. It has been a long time coming. I know I'm always in uh, different shirts. I just like changing my shirts. I will finally be done with this wall, and I'll be able to hopefully organize my garage a lot better, because I do have one last thing uh, here to put together that's not a part of the wall, but a part of this, will be a part of this area of the wall. So what I did here, I just have a couple marks, just an inch and a half up, that I'm gonna be going on here. So I'm not going for level here. I'm just going for the same, uh, where's this one at? Like right here, yeah. Just the same distance above the bottom of the wood because I mean really level doesn't matter for me so much here uh, as 
as much as just alignment with everything that's already here. So that's what I'm focused on. I'm just gonna measure or level the top up or align the top up with these marks that I have up here. And rather than nailing in, because this wood wasn't perfect wood, it's got a little bit of warpage. Uh, so what I'm opting to do is screwing these in. It's not as, uh, I guess, clean as finish nailing them in place, but I think it'll actually get me a better result in getting them nice and tight to the wall. I'm gonna get that done, and this is gonna be done. I'm so happy. Now I did just leave this stuff plain wood for a reason, instead of doing like the black to mix it in with that. I left it this because I assumed being in the garage, it was gonna get beat up occasionally or just over time. I thought that'd be easier to hide any imperfections and just nicks, dings, dents, whatever, by just being wood as opposed to paint chipping. So that's why I went ahead and did that. It, it, does, it will look a little bit different than this wall at the moment, but this has been up for a little while, so. I'm thinking that stuff will yellow a little over time and this stuff will all pretty much look the same in a little while. This isn't totally fastened yet, uh, I just have these first two screws in here. But obviously what you can see I did here was uh, just a straight butt joint and I actually, when I sanded these, I even rounded over all these edges because I just planned on doing this. Now this is obviously a preferential thing. You could like this, you could hate it. I just thought it would be easier than trying to cut an angle and make this seamless because when I've done that in the past, it just doesn't always seem to work out for me. And anyways, like I don't mind it sometimes, sometimes I like it, but when I'm, when you're clearly seeing the grain of the wood, even if you tried to have like a perfect seam here where you wouldn't even see it, you're still gonna see the grain change. So it's like, Unless you have a board with really closely matching grain, you're not gonna be hiding the joint anyway. So I thought, why even try? Just do like a butt joint here and let it be. So that's what I did. I think it's fine. I forgot about this outlet and I didn't have it covered so I ran down to my basement and just by some chance of luck I actually happened to have a plate. I don't know if I was planning on doing white plates out here but this is what I had because I needed something to tell me exactly where a plate would be because I forgot all about this and I needed to cut this out for uh, this plate. I thought about it in the past but when I was going to finish this up just now and do this I completely forgot about that. So. I had to actually I had to cut this one to length, which I knew I would have to do, and uh, then I had to cut this out and sand these edges a little bit to kind of round them over, but that I forgot about. So I got that done. Now this wall is done. I have one thing left to do, and then it's time to organize this mess of a garage. Right, everybody after a lot hot of organizing and cleaning this is finally done it only took me several months to finally finish it seems to be a growing theme for my projects obviously my garage is not done this is literally just like a quarter of it but what this has allowed me to do is get a lot of the materials that were kind of just taking up space and blocking me from doing anything I've, I've been able to get them up high out of my way so I could fit stuff a lot more efficiently and just more stuff because this literally just gets it out of the way where I wasn't using space before. So my garage as a whole still has a long way to go, but I can fit a car in here now. And if you remember what it looked like before, no chance whatsoever. In fact, I may even be able to get two cars in here. I haven't tried yet, but I will. I actually got this industrial rack from Costco. It was only like 
240 bucks compared to everybody else's 300 or even more for literally the exact same thing. And it's great, I love it. A lesson I learned in this process or I'm just learning throughout the, the processes of, of going through some of these projects is there's only so much in materials that you realistically need to hold on to. I kept nearly everything, all scraps from just about every project because I always thought in my mind, maybe this could be used, maybe down the road somewhere I might need this on a project, a little piece of wood, a little scrap here, a little scrap there. But I've almost never needed any of it. And really I don't think this is necessarily about wanting to use it down the road on and in some potential project in the future. I think at least for me it just has to do with not wanting to waste money. Because this stuff costs money and if I don't use it then it's essentially wasted. But really and truly, it already is wasted because I'm not going to use it again. I'm most likely never going to touch this or use this for anything. So really it's already wasted. And rather than trying to hold on to that and prevent that from happening, I think I just need to accept that it already did happen and I just have to learn to let it go. So if you've got nothing from this video so far, hopefully I can at least leave you with that. Uh, on that note, I guess that's it. Thank you to everybody who has been watching my videos, has subscribed. Please, if, if you did enjoy this, like it, subscribe it, subscribe it, subscribe to the channel. Comment, if you have any questions, uh, you know, just ask. I don't get a lot of comments, so it's easy for me to respond. Other than that, uh, I'll see you next time, guys. Thanks a lot. God bless, man.